To start things off in Game 2 of the NBA Finals, Jalen Brown picked up where he left off in Game 1, hitting consecutive threes to give the Boston Celtics a quick spark. And just like in Game 1, the Warriors started the second half in dominant fashion, playing inspired basketball on both ends of the floor. That's, however, where the similarities between the first two games ended, and at the end of the third quarter, we had a pool party. While the Warriors' offense was a joy to watch in this second half, it was really their effort and teamwork on the defensive end that made this game a blowout in the end. So let's take a look at what made the Celtics' offense so inept in that second half. Here we have a Tatum-Horford pick and roll, which the Warriors switch. And notice that as Wiggins switches onto Horford, he switches onto the top side of him, which for a moment shows that Tatum has zero room to breathe. The downside of switching onto the top side means that Wiggins is not between his man and the basket. So Tatum looks to hit Horford on the roll, but there's no advantage here because Looney rotates off of Robert Williams to switch onto Horford as Wiggins simply takes Williams and Horford can't get it done in the post. On this play, it's hard to tell since he's freelancing so liberally, but Draymond is actually guarding Tatum here. His help is able to plug up the drive and Curry is ready to rotate to Tatum, but that leaves Jalen Brown unguarded at the rim. It's a super risky play, but Draymond is able to deflect the pass to deny an easy layup. This is a pretty silly action from the Celtics, running a handoff for Jalen Brown where the Warriors simply trap him, and then his only outlet option is Robert Williams. Curry instantly recognizes this and is able to get the steal. While we did just see a trap, the majority of the time, the Warriors will switch screening actions, and on this play we see Klay Thompson cross-matched against Al Horford in the post. The Boston Celtics actually run the Warriors' pet play, which is split action, but the Warriors switch the action to not allow an open three. The downside of switching is that it should theoretically leave you at a disadvantage in the post on mismatches, but Klay Thompson is so sturdy here and doesn't give up any ground, forcing Horford into a bad shot. Here we see an action that forces two switches by the Warriors, with Curry now on Brown and Looney now on Smart, but look at how terrible the spacing is by the Celtics, which allows Curry to get into position to take a charge, and it's Looney from behind that gets the block. When the Celtics finally ran a good play, the shot simply just didn't fall. Then we saw three consecutive plays in transition where the Celtics couldn't score with two missed layups and a turnover. And this type of stuff is just too difficult to overcome in a finals game. Finally, the Warriors did end up botching a defensive assignment as Wiggins switches here, but he doesn't switch up to take away Tatum's airspace. And you can see Kerr get on Wiggins for not switching up. Here's a play where the Warriors actually avoid switching a few actions, waiting to switch until this screen, but at this point the shot clock is so low that they don't even go at the mismatch, and there's still a mismatch as Horford gets the rebound, but if he can't take advantage of Curry in the post, then that's just cementing why a switch heavy defense is perfect for the Warriors. The Warriors might have given up a Tatum 3 on this pin down since Wiggins decides to shoot the gap, which means goes under the screen rather than switching it. But Wiggins' length allows him to recover and he denies Tatum the middle of the floor while Porter helps baseline, which I consider to be essentially a soft trap. Grant Williams tries to be a threat here, going back door, then waiting in the dunker spot, and then flashing to the nail to try to set a flare screen, but it's all useless and it's pretty stagnant basketball for Boston. A big reason why the Warriors defense is so elite is their baseline help. The IQ and length of their wing defenders allows Curry to deny Peyton Pritchard the middle of the floor and force him into the corner. Porter denies Tatum the ball, and the second it looks like Pritchard has a step on Curry driving, Wiggins is laying in wait ready to help. This forces another pass which leads to a turnover by White. 
Here we see a switch by Draymond on the off-ball screen, but what's more important than the switch is that after the switch, he denies Tatum the ball. Derek White drives, but he duffs the layup, and Curry holds up well enough against Pritchard and then gets a deflection. Here we see another example of Draymond freelancing as he's guarding Tice, but able to help here. This security that Draymond gives allows Wiggins to play much more aggressively as long as he doesn't foul here. And the Warriors will live with this long contested three by Pritchard. Here we see Tatum trying to hunt Curry, but the Warriors don't give up the switch, so Tatum has to attack Wiggins. He does beat him off the dribble, but once again, the Warriors' baseline help defense forces the Celtics into another stagnant possession, and we've got a shot clock violation. Once again on this play, we see more excellent ball denial on Tatum by Wiggins, and the Celtics get a decent look at three, but Tatum is clearly being taken out of this game by design. Remember when we saw Kerr yelling at his team to switch up? Well, this is what that's supposed to look like. And once again, the other man switching is on the top side of the screener so that Tatum has no breathing room. This leaves a soft spot in the defense, and though Nemanja Bielica is not a great defender, he does have good defensive IQ, and his rotation here forces another turnover. And like I said, Bielica is not the best defender in the world, but at least he gives effort, and it should really dishearten Celtics fans to see their star player not be able to take advantage of him in isolation. Bielitsa's impact continues here as he forces yet another turnover by Al Horford, and this was the play that made Ime Udoka raise the white flag and surrender. There are many switch-heavy defenses in the NBA today, but what sets the Golden State Warriors defense apart is their ability to make star wings uncomfortable by switching up to take away space, their ability to deny the ball with multiple and lengthy wing defenders, and their elite baseline help, which allows their worst defenders to be able to pressure the ball without worry. Thanks for checking this one out, and remember to subscribe for more.